Hi friends, uh, welcome to All and Unlock. Thank you very much for all your support, which has been tremendous. We really appreciate your interest in our videos as well as the feedback, which will always make us keep doing better and better for you. Today we going to talk about a very common topic that is cardiac stress testing that come across all the time either in examinations or day-to-day -day clinical practice or maybe I think it might be true with every one of you where your family member might have asked about this talking about whether you know this test should be performed or not why do we need it what are the reasons one should get it so so today I'm going to just touch a little bit a little bit about it with some basics and uh, let's let's I hope that it helps so uh, things that I'm going to talk about is uh, you know why stress test then who we should do stress testing and what are our options that are available I think in just simple terms I would say every time you hear about chest pain think about doing a stress testing now it's a blanket statement so don't take it for granted you have to think about other causes of chest pain not every chest pain should be getting a stress test okay so just want you to remember that chest pain assessing the risk of coronary ischemia then you want to think of stress testing if you look at the real guidelines who should get it in American Heart Association guidelines summary uh, there's clear cut indication that is somebody who comes with chest pain and is an intermediate probability of having coronary artery disease and that is what my first point is that is intermediate risk chest pain now what do you really mean by that what I mean by that is this is a group of patients who walk into you and complain of chest pain they have certain risk factors they tell you a story which may be typical of cardiac chest pain or may not be but their diagnostic evaluation in the form of a ECGs, troponins or enzymes is negative. That means they do not fall in the category of acute coronary syndrome. So you think it may be chest pain from heart or it may be not. And in order to assess this further, the test of choice is stress testing. Other very common indication that is used by cardiologists all over the world is after a myocardial infarction, infarction to assess the functional ability that how much they can walk how much they can tolerate how much they can go walking without developing symptoms and that's what I mean by assess assessing functional ability um, it has been noted that uh, the stress testing is of not that value in assessing valvular heart disease I think it's just resting 2D echocardiogram or imaging is probably of more value than stress testing and once again remember contraindicated in acute coronary syndrome that includes ST elevation MI, unstable angina and non-ST elevation MI. Okay, so next, what are the options that are available? I think the most important thing to remember is if your patient can exercise, then that is the best type of stress test. So let's look at how you choose and what are the things that you look at when you're choosing a stress test. I think you should look at two points that is how do you want to stress somebody and there are two options available either exercise or medications and the second is imaging what imaging you want to use to interpret the stress testing so ECG is probably used for everything so that comes whether you choose echo or nuclear the second so the two major category of imaging that is used in most developed world is echocardiogram as well as nuclear imaging I'm going to tell you get go that uh, if you think your patient can exercise then go for stress testing with exercise medication stress testing should be preferred as a second thing because you know in a medication stress testing patient be just lying on the table and you're performing the test you really not know the exact uh, functional capacity which will be more useful and helpful because these stress testing have their uh, disadvantages as well as far as medication is concerned, I think the most popular medication uh, that is used is adenosine and the other one is dobutamine. 
Uh, as far as imaging modality is concerned, there are options like 2D echocardiogram, which is commonly used, and the other one is nuclear imaging. Now, nuclear imaging is very specific and sensitive, so it is very, very um, the, the best test of choice if you're suspecting highly that there could be coronary disease and you don't want to mess it. So its sensitivity is close to 95%. Compared to an echocardiogram, which is not as sensitive, maybe 80%. So you want to choose echo in somebody where you don't want to over-diagnose with coronary disease. Hope this helps. So remember, stress testing for somebody with chest pain and contraindicated in acute coronary syndrome and what are the types that are available. I can go in detail if you'd like me to talk next time about some more in detail about these stress testing. Thank you. Hope this helps. Have a good day.